Okay, I, f I see a couple of people still logging in, but we'll go ahead and get started and uh, they can they won't miss too much. Want to first of all welcome everyone to the conference today. Uh, my name is Andy Reinhardt and I'm a customer success manager at Parsley. I've been with Parsley for about two and a half years, um, was a Parsley user for a couple of years before that, and I've been in journalism almost 30 years altogether, including some time at some, some now gatehouse properties. Over the next hour, we're going to walk through all the different screens in the Parsley dashboard, learn how you can best use those um, every day for your real-time and historical data needs. Uh, there'll be plenty of time to ask questions. Um, the chat window should be working, but we'll also stop periodically as we go through um, the dashboards and give you a chance to ask questions. So, uh, and we'll also have some time at the end. The first thing you'll see up on your screen now is the post screen. I always typically start uh, with the post screen because if you can master all the uh, options on posts, you've mastered about 90% of the dashboard. The first thing you'll note up at the uh, top of the screen is the pulse and historical options. Pulse is what we call our real-time data. And you have the option to look at data for the last five minutes or the previous 24 hours or current day. Note that this is not, um, that when you're looking at these intervals, it's um, for the trailing five minutes or the trailing 10 minutes. It's not five minutes ago. And um, we update our data every 10 and a half seconds. Um, you'll see occasionally little numbers flying into the screen when you're in a real-time view. Um, we call those fly-ins, um, um, pretty literally. And so the data updates every 10 seconds. So even though you're looking at a five minute view, um, that is the trailing five minutes, not five minutes ago. You also can look at historical data, and you've got access to any of the data in your account of the previous year. A couple of different ways you can look at historical data. You can click on the calendar and select any interval you want or use one of the preset ranges, or you can always click and drag on the bars in the bar graph. So if I wanted to see the past three days, for example, I could just click and highlight, and it would select the three days. Anytime you make a date selection, it's going to um, immediately refresh the list of posts down below. And when you make a date selection or an anametric selection and you move to another screen, those options stay with you. The only um, exception to that is if you go to the overview screen, which is a real-time screen. Otherwise, any date and metric selection that you choose will follow you around. I'm going to use yesterday's data for now. Actually, we're going to use today's. Down below the dates, we have uh, a number of different metrics you can use. Uh, some of them will be familiar to you, page views and unique visitors. Um, you've probably heard those several times before. Uh, we also have hang on, we also have a number of other things uh, that you can look at. You can look at page views by device, so you can break those down by mobile, tablet, and desktop. You can look at visitors by near and returning. We consider a visitor to be returning if they've been on the website at least once in the past 30 days. Um, if we've not seen them in the past 30 days, we classify them as new. We give you engage time. We think engage time is an extremely important metric to uh, look at. Um, a couple of reasons for that. One, uh, air research and research others have done have found that um, users who spend more time engaging with your stories tend to be more loyal. And they also tend to be more likely to um, purchase a digital subscription. Uh, we, we've done a study of that. A couple of others have done studies of that as well. So we think it's important to look at engage time and we break that down in two ways. We give you total engage minutes, um, which is all the minutes on the story. And we also give you average engage time and we break that down by near and returning. To uh, calculate engage time, here's what we do. We look to see if the user still has a story open in their browser. And then are they still actively engaging with the story? Are they tapping on the keyboard? Are they moving a mouse? If they're on a mobile device, are they doing any kind of touch event? Anything that signals to us that the story is still in the, the user's active browser tab and is still the user is still actively engaging with it. That's a lot different than, say, Google Analytics time on page, which just measures the time between um, the time somebody starts viewing one page and they go view the next page. Um, if there is no next page, they don't calculate it. If you get up and go get a you know coffee or something like that, they keep counting that time. We check every 10 seconds to see if the user is still actively engaging with the page, and we add all that up and break that down for the average. We give you uh, social referrals and social interactions. A social referral means a user found a link on a social network and clicked the link and came to the website. We break those down um, by four uh, different networks for now, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Pinterest. 
We actually track nine different social networks at present. The other five that we track include Google Plus, Reddit, StumbleUpon, Instagram, and a link shortener called Post, P-O.S-T. Any links that we send you coming from those nine social networks, we, we uh, include those in the social referrals. A social interaction means a user took an action out on the social network itself. That could be a like, a share, or a comment on Facebook. Could be a retweet on Twitter, a pin on Pinterest. Anything where the user took the action related to the story, but didn't necessarily click the link. One thing to note is uh, currently you'll see LinkedIn listed on the social interactions. However, LinkedIn turned off their social interactions access to all third parties a few weeks ago. Um, we've left that there now for historical reasons, but we aren't getting any new interactions from LinkedIn. Um, and at some point, we'll probably take that uh, link out of the dashboard um, as, as time grows. But for now, you can only get historical LinkedIn interactions data. Uh, they're not allowing anyone to access any new interactions. And then we also give you the referrals per interaction. A couple of different ways you could use this data. Um, if you have a story that has really high referrals per interaction, that means a lot of people um, are clicking the link, which is a good thing. Um, if you have really low number of referrals per interaction, that could mean that your call to action and your social network post isn't compelling people to click. However, I tend to look for posts that have um, high numbers for both. You know, I like to see, like for example, on Facebook, I wanna see a lot of referrals and a lot of interactions. I don't necessarily worry about the ratio quite as much um, because I want to see you know, not only a post that's driving people back to the website, but also that's encouraging others to share it and comment on it and so forth. So a couple of different ways you can use that data. Some people like to look at this and they look for these high referrals per interaction. Um, again, I tend to look at these numbers over here and look for posts that have both. Because again, that indicates to me that not only are users clicking through, but they're also sharing and commenting and so forth. Again, we give you those for uh, Facebook and Twitter and Pinterest and LinkedIn is there, but doesn't really have any active data at present. And the last metric you have there for now is search referrals. And these are just links coming from a search engine, Google, Bing, and so forth. Anytime you make a metric selection, uh, just as we saw with the dates, the post list will refresh to reflect the, the, what you've chosen. We'll give you a little bit of extra context here. Um, this isn't anything you can't get elsewhere in the dashboard. It just gives you a little bit of extra context to go with the metric you've chosen. One other thing to note is uh, you probably have noticed this already when we selected page views, uh, this number is not the same as this number. The reason for that is that we default to these lists to only include post content, while the metric at the top includes all pages. We track pages in two different ways in Parsley. We either classify those as posts or non-posts. It's actually based on classification on your end. We're just picking that up. A non-post page is something like your home page, a section front, anything that you've told us isn't a post. If I change, if I use one of these filters and I change the page type to all pages, then immediately you'll see once it refreshes, the number here should match the number at the top. You can use these filters to additionally filter down your posts in several different ways. I could, for example, only opt to view non-post pages, and now I'm looking at anything that we've not classified as a post. Um, again, it could be your home page, it could be some section fronts, obits, and so forth. The other filters we have available are author filters, so I could limit this post to a specific group of writers if I wanted to. Um, so maybe I want to only see Tanner's written, I can do that. We actually have this new filter. Um, let's keep going. Well, as you can see, there's a lot of different byline variations for Tanner's name. Uh, that's not uncommon with a lot of the newspaper companies we work with that have CMSs that allow you to, um, previously allowed you to enter um, your byline in any format. I think you guys have fixed that now. I'm using smart bylines. But so what you can do is you can use a starts with filter and that's just going to search for all these different variations that starts with Tanner's name. Um, we don't have a, a way to group all those together on our end. We treat each byline as a separate variation, but you can use the starts with filter. And for example, if I did this, now I'm looking for any byline that starts with Tanner's name. And it's going to give me that post list for all those different variations.
You can do multiple filters in the author's name as well. So I could add Adam if I wanted to. Um, so now I'll be looking for anything that starts with Tanner or with Adam's name that includes. I could opt to look for anything both of them have written. That's a match all. Match any is like an or statement. So in that case, I would be looking for anything by Tanner or Adam. With a match all, I'm looking for anything both of them have written. I could also look for any stories that didn't have them as one of the authors and that's using an exclude filter. You can use multiple filters together. So I could add a section filter here as well and look for specific sections. I could look for specific tags if I wanted to. And I could also filter this list by published date. So maybe I only want to see stories published um, in a certain time. The selection start corresponds to the start date at the top of the screen. So in this case, I'm looking for stories published today because I'm looking at, again, the start date corresponds up here. I could also look at today's metric for anything published in the past three days, seven days, 30 days, and so forth. Once you get the combination of filters and metrics and dates in place that you want, you have the ability to export the post link, uh, the post from this page, or you can schedule a report based on the criteria. If you run an export from here, um, it's gonna export either to a spreadsheet or a CSV file. And again, you see the options 100, 500, or 10,000. I can also schedule a report from this screen and we'll talk more about reports in just a moment. A Couple of other things about this screen, um, you'll see these badges. This tells you that um, this is the leading referral source for the story and how much of the traffic in the period came from that source. Sometimes you'll see a story with no badge. That means that at least um, you only see a badge if one source is driving at least 15% of the traffic in the period. So that means there's no single source driving at least 15% of the traffic. Most stories, however, are gonna end up having a badge. The uh, the icon that you see here is an external link that will take you out to the story itself. We'll show you up to 50 stories at a time on the page, and you can keep clicking through as need be. Um, I don't see any questions in the chat, but does anyone at this point have any questions they'd like to ask? Okay, we'll, we'll continue on then. So from, from, a post detail, from the post page or any of the pages, you can click on a headline of a story and that's gonna take you into what we call the post detail page. It's literally just the details about the specific post. First thing you'll notice at the top of the screen is the, the, the data we've collected about the story, the headline, the publication date, the author's name, and the section. When a, we first see a story published, a brand new story, we come out and we collect that data. Recognizing that in a breaking news situation, headlines can often change in other details. We'll check at least once an hour for the first 24 hours that a story has been published to see if the, the data in the story has changed. If so, we'll grab the new um, pieces of data and update it. So we'll grab the new headline or, or anything else that you've added. Outside that 24 hour window, there is a, a way for us to get the data, but it's not automatic. Um, you have to do something called a recrawl and you can either um, have your local site admin handle that for you, or you can reach out to us and we'll take care of it. You've got the same options for a post that you have for a post detail page. You can look at it in real time or historically. If you're looking at it in real time, you can get this graph. We'll give you the basic details about the story for the date ranges you're looking at, page views, visitors, and average time. We'll show you uh, where the audience is viewing the story. Are they viewing it on the website? Are they looking at it out on Google AMP or on Facebook Instant? I don't think you guys are, are got Facebook Instant set up yet, but I know that's in progress. And then we'll give you the referral section. And we think referrals are extremely important. This lets you understand how the audience is getting to this specific story. We break down referrals five ways um, in those five buckets you see. For social, that's those nine social networks we talked about. Anytime you click on one of these buckets, you'll see the just the list of sources specific to that story. Search, again, we track a lot of different search engines, Google, Bing, Yahoo, some others such as Ask and DuckDuckGo. The other box is anything, any external link that has driven someone to the story that we've not classified as search and social. First thing that you're obviously gonna notice is a couple of Google things there. 
Um, Google News, we don't consider to be search because the user can simply click on a link and come to uh, the story. They don't have to actually run a search query to get to it. Google APIs, um, that refers to the recommendations that you see on um, Android devices and your browsers when you first open Chrome for the first time. Um, the cards, they're called. The, so anytime someone clicks a link on one of these cards, which doesn't involve a search, then again, we classify that as and the other. You also see some links here from other websites that have linked in and so forth. Internal is um, any link from within the website itself. And then direct is basically everything else. Um, direct could be links from newsletters, certain mobile apps, um, people who directly type the link, um, have used some messaging apps and so on. Um, basically, it's considered as direct and unknown. For some of the um, referral sources, we have some additional data you can get to by clicking these little down arrows. For Twitter, for example, we can show you the actual tweets that brought people to this story. So you can open that down and you can get a sense of who's tweeting about your content. Unfortunately, we don't have that information for Facebook, but the good news is you guys use CrowdTangle, uh, which is an excellent source of information there. For some of the, sometimes in the other box, we actually can show you the link that brought people to the page. You can click out and go view the link externally and see how someone is linking to your content. Some sources provide that information, some don't, and we can't show it that. Come on down, we'll show you some campaign data. This is typically a campaign means um, that someone has clicked a link that had some certain um, parameters attached to the link. In this case, is, um, you guys use campaigns to track uh, inbound content from your daily newsletters. And so we'll show you how many times someone clicked the link in the newsletter and came to this post. You can get a little more information about this. Um, you may need to ask someone there what all the different codes mean. Um, but these are where you can get a sense of, like I said, for this daily newsletter, how many people clicked the link in the newsletter and came to the story. We'll give you a breakdown of, uh, of the social data we've got available in terms of interactions and referrals. We'll break down the visitors and show you how those compare to the site average. We'll break down what device they're using to view this story. And then if there, if there are different URLs, that someone has used to view this story, we'll roll all those up together and give you a sense of what URLs people used. And then finally at the bottom, we'll show you what people did after they viewed this story in terms of traffic on the website. What other pages on the website did they go view? In this case, obviously a lot of people have gone to see this video. They've also looked at this photo gallery and so forth. You can, we'll show you the top 10, but you can keep, click and show all and see actually every link, every internal link that someone viewed from this page. Last thing up at the upper right corner, a useful feature called share. If you open that up and you click generate link, you get what we call a tokenized link. And you can take this tokenized link and you can give it to someone outside your organization who doesn't have Parsley access. And they can view the information only on this page. They won't see any of the links at the top of the screen. They can't go anywhere else in the dashboard. They can only view the data for the specific page. We see these tokenized links used three ways. Uh, the most obvious is for freelancers. If you are working with a freelancer who needs access to data about the story, you can give them the tokenized link and they can view it whenever they want. Um, if you partner with another news organization on a piece of content, maybe you're working with a television station or someone else, you can give them a tokenized link and they again can only see the data for this specific page. And then if your marketing department or your advertising department's working with a sponsor around some sponsored content or native advertising, tokenized links are great for that. You can give the sponsor or advertiser the link, they can view the, con the data on the page, can't go anywhere else, and won't be bothering you more importantly for that information. Once you give someone a tokenized link, it remains active unless you revoke it. To revoke that, you go under the user icon up in the upper right corner. Assuming you have access to this, uh, you click shared links, all those shared links will show up here and you can just click it and revoke it from there. Until you do that though, the link does remain active. Does, uh, and that's a post detail page. Anyone with any questions at this point about post details they wanna ask? Okay, I don't see anything in chat, so we'll just keep going on. Want to talk about the author section next. 
Um, we think author's data is one of the, the best features within Parsley. I um, think it's one of the most useful. Back when I was a reporter and an editor, this is the screen I wish I'd had access to. When you land on authors, um, you'll note again that you've got access to real-time data and historical data. You can sort it by all the different metrics we've already talked about. Uh, all those same metrics are here as well. You can also look at it, use all those filters. And we give you the authors as a whole. And a lot of editors like to look at this screen and to, get, to see kind of broader staff performance in one place. But where this author data really shines is at the individual level. Um, one thing before I move into the individual screen, by default, we're showing you posts from any time that have gotten traffic. So obviously, um, Tanner has not written 41 posts today. Um, that means that we've tracked 41 posts written any point in time. Today, I could add a publish filter and set that to selection star, and now I'm looking at only traffic for the current day. So that's one thing to keep in mind that we get asked a good bit. But again, the author section is what we think is the strength of, of this data. So now if I'm Tanner, I have my own personal dashboard I can use, and I can see how my content is performing and get a sense of all the metrics around my content and see how those are relating to the uh, goals for the newsroom and the company as a whole. Again, as an author, I have the ability to look at my data in real time and historically. Um, I can filter it by section or again, maybe I want to see certain only content published at a certain time. I can get a sense of the total views and visitors. Then I can see my top content. So I can see what stories of mine are performing well today, for example. I can see what sections they're doing well in. Um, I could look at tags. And I can look at referral data. And again, just as we talked about on the post detail screen, we think referral data for individual authors is, is really useful and really important. Um, you should, as a reporter, understand how the audience is getting to your content. And this gives you a chance to do that. Maybe you see on a certain day, you've got a really big story and it's not doing well on social. Uh, maybe you go tweet about it or put a link on Facebook. Um, we've seen uh, reporters get story ideas out of this data. They look at the other bucket and they say, hey, here's a website that's consistently linking to my content. They go and they investigate it and they find out there's a story there. That doesn't happen a lot, but we have seen that happen. We've also seen authors use this data. Um, they look at the social and they see, oh, here's someone who constantly tweets about my content. Next time I write something similar, maybe I'll reach out to them and let them know, hey, you've, you know, you've tweeted about the past you know, 50 stories I've written on this topic. Here's number 51. Um, again, it's just a really good way to understand how people are getting to your specific content um, and just understanding that in general. For the post screen, we'll show you um, 15 stories at a time for at the level, and you can keep clicking the show more option down at the bottom, and you can keep viewing as many stories as you need to each period. Everything else works just the same as we saw on the post screen. You got the referral badges got the real-time options, the context, everything else. One other thing to note, and you've probably noticed this as we've moved throughout the screen, anytime you mouse over a, a story, you'll see the timeline for that specific story highlighted at the top of the screen. So now I'm looking at, you see the green is popping up. The blue is there because I clicked on social and referrals. So I could unclick social and now I'm looking at um, everything up here again. Just one little thing to, to keep in mind. If you want to see how the timeline for a specific story is performing against everything as well, you can see that green, um, dark green area appeared at the top when I moused over. Author pages also have share options, uh, just like uh, individual stories. So if you have a freelancer who's writing for you routinely and needs access to their data, you can give them a tokenized link to an author page as well. In that case, they'll have access to all of their stories, not just one, but again, it'll only be to their specific stories and they can only see everything on this page, nothing else. Um, sections and tags work the same way. Gonna go ahead and talk about those just for a minute. Um, exactly the same way as authors, just the different values. So for example, if you're a section editor and you need to see, maybe you wanna see how sports content is performing. And I used to be a sports editor, so I always use that as uh, my example. Um, you can drill into to the section. You can see the top post in that specific section. You can look at the top reporters within the section. You can understand your referrals traffic as well at the section level. Um, campaign, social, and channel, everything's there. Again, you can look at that in real time and historically. 
Tags work the same way, uh, sections. The difference in Parsley is an individual story can only be um, placed in one section, can only be tracked in one section. But you can add as many tags as you want in your CMS, um, up to 100 tags per story if you wanted to. We think tags are very useful. Um, these are numerical tags, maybe not quite as useful, but someone there may understand what all those mean. Um, there's a, and we see tags being used in three or four different ways. Obviously, topic tagging is, is the most common thing we see, people using topics uh, specific to their coverage area to tag their content. Uh, we see some people tagging content by length, short, medium, and long. Uh, we've seen people use geographic tagging. They tag stories with all the different um, cities and towns in their coverage area. See people using tags for types of content, um, investigative piece, um, data journalism piece, story with video, so forth. Anything that you think can help provide insight into how the audience is interacting with your content, and help you break that down and get some valuable insights. And we think tagging is extremely valuable for that. And we've got a lot of uh, data around tagging out on our website, parsley.com or parse.ly. And you can go look at that there in, in the case study section. I don't see any questions uh, in the chat, but we did want to check to see if anyone had any questions about authors or sections or tags they want to ask. Okay, just as we looked and you saw an individual author page, every section and tag has its own individual page as well. Before we look at reports, I want to go back over to the overview screen. The overview screen is your real-time data home for the site as a whole. And this is where you can see what's, what's trending today, what's doing well on the site today. First thing you'll note, and probably the single thing we get asked most about within Parsley is this little summary here. It's amazing how much interest there is in this little itty bitty uh, area of the dashboard. Uh, what we do there to, to try to calculate that and, and present that summary is that we take the page views um, to the for the current day, we take the number of page views to the current point in time. So for example, now we're looking at 2.30 p.m. Then we're going to go back to the last eight similar days. Uh, in this case, we would look at the last eight Tuesdays and say over the last eight Tuesdays, what was the average number of page views at 2.30 on all those days? There's a little bit more math involved in that, um, some standard deviations and other things, but that's basically how that works. And we, we get that average and we compare it to the current day and, and that drives the summary that we show you at the top, being an exceptional day, an average day or so forth. Again, we get so many questions about that. That's basically how that works. If you mouse over this, we give you a little reminder of, of what that is. You can also see on the overview screen yesterday's traffic. I could click this little arrow and I could get a quick glance at yesterday. We'll give you some basic metrics about the day to this point, total post views, visitors, average engage time for the day and so forth. This is a good place to understand um, your average engage time as a whole for the site for the current day. And that way you can compare your individual stories against that. You can also customize basically every part of this screen. Uh, so for example, I could come into the settings bar. I can turn on a third column down below if I want to, or I could just leave it as two columns. I could also click this drop down, and I could set this to any specific author section or tag. So if I'm an author now, I can have my own real-time screen as well as my own um, historical screen that we looked at earlier. So I could just set my name here. Um, you just pick it from there. And now I'm looking for um, any stories by Adam, and Adam's got his own real-time screen now. Um, you can also do this for sections and tags as well. So you could set it as a section. Again, maybe I want to see, maybe I only care about sports. That sports is a section. I've got a real-time screen specifically for sports. And you can do that for any section, tag, or author if there's a value available. Uh, if I want to go back to the, the whole site, I just go back to all data. Down, at the, down here, I can also customize what appears in these by clicking the little gear icon. Maybe I don't want to see um, the top posts for today by page views. Maybe I want to see those by social referrals. So I could do that. Um, perhaps I want to see what's doing well in search. I could look at search referrals as well. So you have the option to customize each column that you have um, as you desire. And you can always go down and reset and go back to the default. One thing that we see a lot of people doing, um, there's really no 
best practice for this. It's, it's what is most relevant for you. One thing we do see a lot of people doing lately is we um, see this top post for the current day. And we'll see a lot of people set this to um, maybe the last hour and sort those by social referrals. That gives them a sense of what's, um, what's getting traffic from social, uh, which is often important to newsrooms, audience development people, and so forth. So now I'm looking at my total content for the day, but I can see what's kind of bubbling up on social traffic coming into the site. Uh, one of the common combinations we see. You can also um, get a different view of this by clicking these two arrows in the upper right. It's going to take you into what we call the full screen view. Full screen view is all the same data that you just saw. It's just a different presentation. Um, this makes a great presentation for big screens in the newsroom or in an office. And you've also got all the same customization options here as well under this gear icon. Clicks out that option again. And that's the overview screen. Uh, now I want to spend some time talking about reports. Um, we can go back and talk about some of the other screens in a minute, but definitely want to touch on reports. We think it's a, a really valuable tool. Uh, and what a report is, it can just bring you some of this content in your email, or you can download it on demand. So a report is a great way to uh, maybe set up a report that you receive each morning to get a quick glance of how things were the previous day before you begin your day. Several different types of reports. The most common report we see used is a top listings report. And a top listings report is literally just a list of something. It could be a list of your top stories, a list of your top authors, um, sections, tags, and so forth. Top stories are the one that everyone's always interested in. And what most people want to do is each morning they like to get a list of the top stories for the previous day. So we're going to walk through how you would set that up. I would pick posts because I want to see stories. I want to get this report every day. So I'm going to click daily and then I'm going to pick the time I want to get it. Uh, maybe I want to get the report every day at nine. Continue. Um, I want to see yesterday's top stories. So I will pick yesterday in the period. I'm going to leave it sorted by page views, but I have the option to look at it by any of the metrics I have there. And in an HTML report, you can go up to the top 1,000 stories. Um, in a spreadsheet, you can go to 10,000. We're going to leave it at 20 for now. I could filter this report down to specific authors or specific sections. I could limit it to only stories published yesterday. But all these filters are available here as well. And I can send the report to other people simply by putting email addresses in here as a comma list. If you create reports for other folks, but you don't want to get them, you can exclude yourself. Um, it's a great little addition. Previously, when you created a report for someone, you also received it. Um, I remember the previous job I had, I set up a bunch of reports for people and then was kind of surprised the next day when they all showed up in my email box. Um, that doesn't happen anymore. You can just exclude yourself. Once you have everything set, you click save. Now the report is scheduled and ready to go. And it's always going to be in the scheduled tab. So anytime you need to come in and change it or modify it in any way, it will be in scheduled. You can simply click on it. It'll take you right back to the screen. You can modify it there as need be. If you have a scheduled report and you need to rerun it quickly for some reason, you can just click the play button here. That's going to regenerate the report and that will move it and create a copy of it in the recently run section. All of your reports that you run on demand will show up in recently run. This is what the top listings report looks like. And again, this makes a great report to set up and have rolling into your email box every morning. Uh, again, we're looking at it sorted by page views and we're looking at the top 20 um, stories at this case. You could get top 50, 100, 10,000 or 1,000, whatever you want to get. The other report we see commonly run is the details report. Details report is a much more in-depth report. It has a lot more data available. You can uh, set this up as an author section tag or site report. We typically see the site details report run by um, online editors, um, managing editors, so forth. Authors typically like getting an author details report. And we'll take a look at one of those now. Uh, so if I want to see an author details report, I'm just going to run it once in this case so I can view it immediately. And now we can, we'll use enter again. Uh, there we go. So I want to get an author details report, let's say for the previous week. And I want to run it by page use. I'm going to run it now. What we often see are um, reporters setting up author details reports as a weekly report. 
There's a lot of information in this, as you'll see now. Uh, you could get it every day, but we think it makes a much better weekly or monthly report. So now if I'm Tanner, I can look at this report and can see how my um, stories performed the previous week. I can see the total views that all my content got and visitors and engaged time and interactions, as well as the number of new posts I published last week. I can see how people found my content uh, and get a sense of that as a whole and see what my top sources were. I can get a sense of how my stories performed in the various campaigns that are running. And so we'll show it here. In this case, um, campaigns, the newsletter drove it's like 12% of people to his stories last week. We'll break down devices and visitors for you. We'll show you the top sections for your content. And then finally, the top posts. These are published anytime. And then the top new posts, which are only published in the date range that you're running. Again, this is a really in-depth report. It's a great report. Probably a lot of information to really um, process every day. So we think it's, it makes for a better weekly and monthly report. The section details and site details reports are the same if you run one of those. For example, here's what a section report would look like for a specific section. This is an example. Again, it looks just the same as the author report we just looked at, but now we're looking at a specific section. But we'll to give you all the referrals and devices and visitors and the top posts in the section and so forth. The site details report works the same way as well. Site details is extremely popular, again, as a weekly and monthly report, just to give you that broader sense, that more in-depth data. So the, uh, probably the most popular combination that we see people do, um, especially for reporters, reporters will often set up a top post report and filter it to their specific name and get that set up as an every day. So every day they get a quick email that says, here's your most popular content yesterday. And then they set up a details report as a weekly report <clears throat> that rolls in say on Mondays and they can see how all of their content performed for the previous week Look at those referral sources and other things. Um, a really popular combination we see um, done there at the reporter level and the editor level. We see a lot of editors now creating um, listings and details reports for groups of authors. So maybe you manage a section and you want to see how all of your authors are performing. You could add all the authors to a report, set that up and get that delivered every day. A couple of other reports we have, the stats over time report. So that's over time is, is really good if you just need some quick data about something because you can break it down by day. It's the one or week or month. Maybe I want to see just how the site as a whole performed last week. So I want to see that looking at page views, I'm just going to group it by day. I call the stats over time the boss report because it's really good when your boss says, hey, how did their website do last week? And so you can run this and you can get a sense of that really quickly, how the website did. Again, broken down by day. It's not the most exciting report otherwise, um, but it does give you a good way to, to look at those numbers by day at a glance. Whereas the stats over time report is really great is if you run the stats over time export. You set about the same way, but what it's going to give you is a spreadsheet that will contain every metric we have. Um, you get po page views, social interactions, social referrals, device views. Everything is in that spreadsheet and you can break it down by day. Um, stats over time export is, is probably the most common report I run and, and a lot of the team here at Parsley runs It's because again, it's just so much data and if you're a spreadsheet junkie, it's a great place to dive in to really understand things about the site. Same thing holds true for the top listings export. You can, you'll get a list of stories or authors or whatever you pick with all those metrics available. So if you really want to dive into your story content and see how it's performing, um, you can run a top listings export and see all that at once. And you can schedule those as well. So you can set up a top listings export um, and get the spreadsheet delivered to you every morning if you wanted to. The other two reports that are available, um, the Evergreen report, uh, in our research, we found that stories typically get 80 to 90 percent of their traffic in the first three days after they're published. When we see a story that's continuing to get a significant amount of traffic outside that three-day window, we flag it as an evergreen candidate, and it becomes an evergreen story if it continues to get some traffic. And we surface all that in the evergreen report. When you run the evergreen report, um, typically it's, gonna, it's a 30-day report. You just pick one day, run it, and it's gonna give you a look at this, how the content performed in that period. It looks something like this. 
So now what we see in July for this website, there were 35 posts that we flagged as evergreen and they drove 16,000 views. We'll give you the comparison for those stories, how they compare to the site-wide trends in terms of the sections they're in and the authors and so forth. And then we'll show you the top posts regardless of publication date and then the top new posts, which are anything published in the period itself. A couple of different ways that people use this report and it's really starting to to grow in popularity among the people that use our site. The most common thing we see now are social media managers and audience development people love this report because they'll run it when they're looking for something to surface on social media, maybe on weekend or on an evening or something like that. This is content they can look at and they know is still of interest to the audience. Maybe it's a story that was published a few months ago, but the audience is still interested in it for whatever reason. So they might resurface it on social. People are also beginning to study this report and study the evergreen, um, the various evergreen things we have to get a sense of the topics and trends involved. You know, are there specific topics that are resonating with the audience, not just specific stories? Um, that could help you know, inform product decisions. You know, maybe you're going to build a product around a topic that has a lot of interest. It might even influence some coverage decisions as well. The other way we see the Evergreen Report used is if you're responsible for programming the homepage and you're looking for something to promote on a weekend or a slow time. Um, this again is makes for a good report to look at things to resurface, um, things to pull out of your archives, resurface those on the homepage uh, because the, the audience is already interested in them, at least some segment of your audience. The other report that um, you saw there is the audience overview report. I think most of the sites now in Gatehouse have access to this. This isn't a report we enable by default, um, but I think everyone may have access. If you don't, you can let us know and we can provide that for you. It's just a, what it, audience overview is, and we'll see if, yeah. What the audience overview report is, it gives you a good overview of the website as a whole, uh, but provides some metrics that we don't have available anywhere else. It may take a minute to run, so, um, I'll talk about it in just a couple of minutes. We may have to come back to that. But the audience overview, uh, hey, it finished. Again, it's it's numbers that you don't have elsewhere in Parsley necessarily. In terms of total visitors and visits, this is the only place where you can get any visit information in Parsley. Um, and the total views are there. We'll give you the average visit length for uh, the period involved for the month. And also then some information about visitors by month, visitor loyalty, and so on new visitors turn visitors. It's a very visitor focused report. And then at the bottom, we kind of define how we calculate everything here. Again, it's only available as a monthly report. You can only select a month that runs. And typically it's not available until a day or two into the new month for the previous month. So for example, the July report usually isn't available till the second or the third of August, for example. Um, but that report is there. If you don't have access to audience overview and you want it, feel free to send me an email, andy at parsley.com, and we can enable audience overview for you. At this point, I want to stop. Anyone have any questions about reports they want to ask? Andy, this is Jackie. Uh -huh. um, can we go back to tags for a moment? Sure. Absolutely. Um, so that's connected to Keyword tags in our CMS, yes. That's my that's that. my understanding. Yes. Penny can, Penny yeah, can exactly. Wait. That's correct. So basically, anything that you would put in, in that the board field, of governors raised just one issue to President Trump. Okay. So, so um, does anyone have or are any of our properties using sort of that idea of tracking length, um, tracking like? Um, you know, if the piece was maybe syndicated, do you guys, are we doing that? Or is there anything I can maybe work from that, like to develop something like that for our newsroom? Yeah, so Wilmington was, and I think they still are. Um, there are some, and Penny is going to probably know this answer better than I too. Um, I know that Penny, uh, that Wilmington had been doing the top, the length tagging. You can see there's short, brief, long, et cetera. Um, they're doing some topic tagging and some geographic tagging as well. Um, Sherry Jones can can provide more information around that, but I know they were doing a lot of this, um, a lot of those examples I talked about earlier. Yeah, that's correct. And I think Michelle's actually picked that up in Columbus too. Um, 
But uh, yeah, so Jackie, that's definitely something I would recommend. Um, the challenge is, of course, is always the training to get uh, the reporters or editors to add those tags. But that's one of the huge, like, underutilized areas of Parsley, I think, that just a lot of folks don't think. You know, if you just spend a little time tagging a little bit of content, either by beat or even sub beats and categories, like think about an education reporter kind of doing this for the various areas they cover within a beat um, and length stories with video, you know, all that kind of stuff. There's just a lot of geographic locations, a lot of different things you could do. Yeah, I can. Oh, yes, I made a couple notes about like tagging stuff that with video, with audio, um, whether it was syndicated AP, but even this evergreen and jumping over to that evergreen and report. So that was interesting. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I can give you a, another real life example of, of how tagging could be used. Um, where I live, I run a local sports website and have the luxury of using Parsley to track that. And I noticed that um, a couple of years ago, um, volleyball stories were doing really well um, on the site. Anytime we covered a specific volleyball match, the stories were over indexed and they were drawing far more interest than I expected. Um, and I didn't really understand why, but I, so I dug into the, um, the detail page, the tag, like the tag detail page and noticed that there was a, those stories were getting a huge amount of traffic from Facebook. And so I went back and looked at the Facebook posts, finally realized it was um, all due to a specific player who was part of a local Mennonite community. And any time um, there was a story mentioned in her, that Mennonite community shared the story amongst themselves and it drove a lot of traffic. That's, that's the kind of granular detail you can get if you have a really smart tagging strategy. You can really drill down and, and get some valuable insights at that level. So. Thank you again. Uh -huh. So at this point, um, I know we're, we're approaching the end of the hour. Does anyone have any specific questions they want to ask? Anything they feel like they didn't see, um, if we need to see again, or so forth? Andy, did you answer Ann's question in the chat higher up? Um, it was at about 1.30, so I think we might have gone over it. I can ask it again. Okay. I'm just, any, so, yeah, I, see, I see it now. So. Okay. Uh, it's, it's the percentage, percentage in the badge represents the, the percentage of, um, referral traffic to the story coming from that specific source. So it's not, it's not just limited to like social media. It would be the percentage of all traffic coming to the story. Okay. Thank you. My chat window is not at auto advancing. Sorry about that. So. Penny, you also, I think you said you also wanted me to just show campaigns really quickly for the newsletters, correct? Yeah, you touched yeah. on it earlier, but yeah, I just, I know we get a lot of newsletters. I don't questions. know if these are all the same dead man. If you okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if you go into campaign searches, I just want to highlight the DHM. Okay. Uh, Minnesota key. It says okay. URL, so you can see Off that 13. it comes from the um, daily right. newsletter. Okay, I'm going to mute everybody again. One thing Kate Carlson. So in campaigns, again, campaigns represent um, where you've got certain parameters attached to URLs. So in this case, uh, what Gay House does is they highlight all the different email newsletters that are going out with these campaign codes. You can drill into a specific code to understand what content is coming through that. So in this case, the daily newsletter, which Gay House does extremely well. I could open up this campaign. I can go into the campaign details page for that. And now I can see for whatever date range um, I'm looking at, what content is doing really well is, is coming from the campaign itself. So in this case, I can see, here's the top story today from the newsletter. Um, and I can see how many minutes, um, what the share of total minutes and visitors are uh, from that campaign compared to all post traffic. Again, you can also click over the campaigns, and, and in this case, it's like we're in a campaign details page already. Um, but it's just a good place again to understand, start understanding the segmentation involved. In this case, the newsletter traffic. So you've got the daily newsletter, you got the afternoon newsletter. Um, and there's some various other newsletters people have, and so you can see all that in one place, and, and that's kind of the beauty of the campaign screen. One other thing you can do. Uh, maybe you want to see 
all this newsletter traffic in one place. Um, and if you were had it tagged all as GHM, you could create what we call a custom campaign group. And you would do that by clicking custom group and create new campaign group. And what that does is it allows you to group everything based on certain criteria. So you could group everything in campaigns that starts with GHM and you would see all your newsletter traffic in one place that way. So. I disable the comment. <laughs> Bad time to unmute. Um, so any, anything else anybody wants to see or any other questions anyone wants to ask? I think we've about reached the end of the hour, so. Yes. Oh, good. She what with it? Okay. Um, a couple of other things, and I'll let you guys go. Uh, you can always use the guide button up in the upper right corner um, to get more information about whatever page you're on. Okay. Um, so you click guide, it opens up this little window and it'll show you again, different information about everything on the page. You can see common use cases and some terms are defined and so on. And again, that changes from screen to screen. Um, we're actually we're in the process of revising some of this now and we're kind of reworking it uh, to make it a little more useful. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, you can also always visit our website at parsley.com. We've got an extensive help section there. It's got case studies. You can sign up for our authority report, which is an email that we send out every month, um, highlighting some different research that we do. And finally, if you have any questions, always feel free to reach out to me. Um, it's Andy at parsley.com. And always very ha happy to help as I can. So unless anybody has any more questions, um, I'll let you get back to uh, the important job of working and reporting and doing all that. So I appreciate everybody taking the time and hope everybody has a good day. Thank you. You too. No. Yep. And also, there's the, that guy who killed that cop down in Fort Myers was released two days before here in Sarasota. That's something. As soon as he finishes that, he's writing up the one on the judge releasing the guy who didn't kill the